then go ahead and introduce yourself. All right. I'm Stephanie Arnold. Um, I'm 29. I've grown up in Maryland. Uh, I'm an art teacher now. I was studying biology previously, and I switched over to art education. I've been teaching art for two years. Um, I enjoy playing softball, um, playing ice hockey. I love doing that. Um, I received a meningitis vaccine it's called Menomune uh, in March of 2000 and became very ill from it. Um, I guess, I, you know, symptoms, I lost my cognitive abilities, uh, ability to read, speak, understand others, uh, form thoughts. I couldn't stand any light, sound, or smell, touch. Um, movement of myself would make me sick. Um, the, the breeze that I would create, um, movement of someone walking by would make me sick, their breeze. Um, even breathing, the, the air going in and out of my throat and my lungs would make me physically sick. Um, so I'd try and sort of hold my chest open so I wouldn't have to feel the, the breathing as much um, to try and reduce that. I had hallucinations um, for about seven years. Um, I would see um, mice on the floor. I would see birds flying. Um, those are more afternoon hallucinations. In the morning I'd have sort of horseshoe shaped U-shaped things falling down there, bright blue, green, and yellow, like fluorescent, fluorescent colors and falling down. Um, I slept 15, 16 hours every day, lost 43 pounds in eight weeks because I couldn't eat anything. Um, I stayed in my bedroom with nothing. It was pitch black. I just sat on the edge of my bed. I couldn't lay down because the nausea was so intense. Um, anything I ate which was nothing really. It was saltine crackers and water. Just went right through me. Um, I couldn't keep anything in. Um, it was pretty rough. Uh, I, I had no um, ability to change any of that, and no one knew, under, no one understood what I had or why I had it. And so it was just sort of just happened all of a sudden. So I also had dilated eyes for two months. Um, my left eye was protruding from my face. It was looking up over that way when this eye was looking straight forward. You'd never had that before? Uh-uh. No. Nope. Every time I try to stand up, my vision would go black. Um, I'd get ringing in my ears. Uh, and I'd kind of pass out. It would, it would drop me and make me sit back down. Um, and I'd have to sort of wait to get, I guess, cleared. My head would clear, and then I could stand up again and be OK. Um, brushing my teeth, I'd have to you know, take a break halfway through because I just didn't have enough strength. Uh, I'd have to catch my breath, wait for my arms to stop tingling, and I could continue on. Same with washing my hair. Um, a weakness I would get in my hands primarily, but also it was also my entire body, but really in my hands I wouldn't be able to open a bottle. Um, I couldn't do anything really. It was just very weak, very fatigued. So, How soon did these symptoms onset after you received the vaccination? I got the vaccine on a Monday afternoon around 3 o'clock. By 6 o'clock um, that evening I had lost a desire to eat. and. By that Friday, I had failed all my midterms. It was right before spring break, and I failed all of them. I knew I had. I didn't understand anything on the page. Um, I was this just sort of is guessing. when you were going in biology? Uh, yep. I was a bio major at that time, and I was taking my midterms. And I knew something was wrong. I had the vaccine. I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was. I kind of thought I had the flu at first. That's how it kind of felt. I went home on spring break, and uh, I didn't go back. I was 13 days later, I wound up in the ER with my protruding eye and vomiting. Um, they didn't know what was going on. Um, I, had, I received the vaccine at my university with two other friends. The one friend got sort of like the flu after it. The other one had absolutely no reaction. And I ended up with this. Um, my parents called the university to get the batch and lot number when they kind of found out what happened. And the university denied I was ever vaccinated there. They said they had no records of me being vaccinated there. So so was it a part of a study or was it just something they were offering students? Student died on campus in January, February time and they found it was for meningitis and so the campus encouraged all students to get the meningitis vaccine to prevent further spread. So I take it it was one of those where they didn't write your name down when you went in, you just kind of went in and took I turns. have a card that they stamped that said I was vaccinated there. So they do have some you, sort you of records. I still have it. Yeah. Yep, I still have so. it. But it was out, the, those symptoms gathered within two months. Um, 
by the end of those two months, I was put on steroids to try and reduce, or trying to um, get me to eat. And um, it also reduced any brain swelling, I guess, because I was able to speak for about a 24 hour time period. And I told my father that I thought I'd gotten sick from the vaccine. And so they admitted me to the hospital at that time. Um, they put me in isolation because they didn't know what I had. They come in, you know, there's an airlock, and they come in with gowns and masks and all the rest. And my parents were sitting there with no mask on, nothing. And they would say, you know, don't you want to put a mask on? You're sitting in the same room as she is. And they're like, you know what? She's been in our house for two months. If she has something, we would have caught it by now, you know? So. <laughs> they didn't want you to think you were getting an alien autopsy. They wanted you to see some faces you knew. Yeah. Oh, God. So they, they did, you know, they did MRI. They did CT, x-rays. Um, they did ultrasounds of my carotids and my organs, my orbits. They've done um, angiogram. They probably an aneurysm. They did a spinal tap. Everything came out clear. So nothing that they ran, you know, told them that I was sick. So I went home with diagnosis of depression and anorexia. Oh, yay. So. You know, so, and you still don't know the batch or lot number? I don't know. Nope. The, nope. That, that is something that frustrates me personally, like when people do the drive up flu shot at a pharmacy, they, there aren't proper records. If something goes wrong, nobody will ever know about it and they right. can never report it. Right, right, uh, right. Ours, mine was reported to Veyers and I checked online a couple years ago and it said that for my treatment to get better, I had two injections of vitamin A and I'm fine, which was complete uh, Not lie. correct. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, <laughs> what have you gone through to? I mean, what? Yeah. Tell me what doctors you went to that actually started to help. At the end of the week, when I was in isolation at the hospital, they dismissed me from the hospital. They also, my doctor and neurologist, dismissed me from their care. They said they never needed to see me again. There was nothing else they could do to help me and take me. They told my parents to take me home, spend my last couple of weeks at home, because there's nothing else they could do. Um, so Were I went home with that doctor. Expecting you to die? Yes. Yes. And that, you know, you can feel it. When you're that close, you can feel it that you're dying. There's no question there. So uh, I went home, and a friend of ours was going to the gym one evening. A friend of theirs was leaving, and they got to talking, and the friend was a doctor who had just read research paper by Mary Megson, and um, he said, you know what, give her vitamin A. You'll see within three days if there's any difference, and if there is, I'll see her. So they told my parents, and... I took vitamin A the first day, no difference. I had been in my room for two months, nothing. No, you know, no light, sound, anything. And I just stayed there. Um, occasionally I'll come downstairs to, I guess, let my parents know I was still alive. <laughs> I don't really know. I was downstairs, the TV on. But I wasn't watching, I couldn't stand anything. But um, they gave me the vitamin A the first day, no change. Second day I felt worse. Um, third day I came down the stairs, I was like, you know what, I feel better all over. My arms don't hurt as much, I don't feel as infected. My legs feel a lot better, and they just sort of stared at me like, what the heck? Because I hadn't spoken in two months, you know? I hadn't gotten out of my room, really, in two months, because I'd go down the stairs and be out of breath, you know? So um, they made a, an appointment with him, and he started me on her detox um, and vitamins. Uh, I, did, I had three powders that I put in a juice. One was Ultra Clear Plus, which was a detox. Um, the other one was Permavite, which was to heal the leaky gut. And the third one was whey protein, which was for weight gain because I'd lost 43 pounds in eight weeks. Um, so I started those and I was taking a whole slew of vitamins. I had A and B, C, um, calcium, quercetin, zinc, magnesium, alfalfa. Um, I took ginger to reduce um, uh, nausea and I still have that um, today. And uh, so I was taking all that and I'd take them twice a day. I took them twice a day for about two years. And I was, very gradually, I was you know, getting better and better and better. Um, and I noticed that if I, if I didn't take a shake, even just you know, if I skipped one, I could already see myself sliding back to where I was. So I knew that I could not by any means stop those, um, even though they are horrendous. They tasted nasty and they felt nasty. But uh, it felt like sand and had like foam on the top. It was, it was gross. But it worked. And uh, <laughs> so I took them. Um, two years I took them, then about a year and a half after that I you know, backed off to one a day and then every other day. Um, and now, nine and a half years later, I take them about once every three months, two, mo two or three months I take them. Um, and it keeps me pretty good. If I stop taking vitamin A today, my words get jumbled, get screwed up. Um, 
I start stuttering, they come out in the wrong order. I can't get them out sometimes. I can feel them in me, but I can't get them out. So it's about um, suppression of your virus? I think so. I think so. Um, initially, I thought it was, I was getting better, but then as soon as I stopped, I could feel everything start to come up again. You know, all the symptoms come up, so I thought, well, maybe it's just covering it up, you know, and so it's not really taking care of the root of it. It's just sort of getting rid of these surface stuff. But now I'm to the point where I am, I, it has taken care of the root. Um, it's still there a little bit, not nearly as what, it, you know, anywhere near as what it was. But it is, it is still there a little bit. And so it's, you know, if I haven't taken my vitamin A for a couple of weeks. My brother, you know, I'll be talking to my brother. He's like, what the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. He's like, I'm not talking to you. We get some vitamin A or something. Because <laughs> my words will just be going everywhere. So as long as I take that, I'm pretty good. So what did the doctor say the root of the problem is? Uh, my doctor that I have today, I still have, um, said it was a vaccine, 100%. Um, it was absolutely the vaccine. And, and, you know, from the treatment that I used, it's, I think it's pretty evident. You know, I'm, on, I'm off of wheat and I'm off of dairy. Um, I, I did um, heavy metal detox for aluminum, arsenic, lead, and mercury. Um, I, you know, the vitamins and supplements. Um, I also did the probiotics. And that's, you know, all of that is basically what's, you know, being done to help those who have gotten sick from vaccines, I guess. And that's, that's what worked for me, so. Yeah, those, those type of things have helped with my children also, although it's frustrating because it's like you don't get, and people won't acknowledge that the vaccine reaction really happened, it, right. you know, that type of thing. But at, at any rate, um, what, you know, obviously you've been highly welcome to an autism conference, so why do you think that we would be so interested in hearing from you? I think in part it's because of the treatment that I used. When I, I, was, I was perfectly fine, you know, I get the vaccine and all of a sudden I'm running parallel to symptoms of autism. I wouldn't say that I had it. Um, although if, if I went to Towson, my university, um, in my chart it said adult onset autism. I didn't know that. I went to them at one point to get a referral to see my doctor and they opened up my chart and they said, so you have adult onset autism, how's that working for you? I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I didn't know I had it, but it's working pretty well, I guess. <laughs> so uh, um, in that respect, you know, I guess because of the so many symptoms that I had were so similar, I suppose. Um, I, did, I do still have um, getting laundry um, out, of the, out of the dryer. Still bothers me to no end to touch that. Um, working with clay occasionally if I'm on the wheel, sp um, throwing on the wheel. Some days I'll go and sit down there and I, I can't do it because the, the feeling on my hands I cannot stand. Um, working with children, you know, when I'm in the art room um, with clay, after working with it, my hands sometimes feel like they're burning or they're tingling or just, just gives me like the goosebumps, just how it feels, drives me nuts. Um, so in that respect, I guess, you know, it's also kind of similar to that of, you know, symptoms of autism, I suppose. So maybe that's why, and also because I've used Mary Megson's treatments, you know, and it's had such a success with me um, following the vaccine. I think that's probably why I've enjoyed coming to these conferences. And also it's, you know, I get to see a lot of other research that's going on and what might help me, you know, now. Because I still have issues, symptoms. So you effects. enjoy these conferences for yourself. <laughs> I enjoy, yeah, finding new things that I can try, yeah. Uh, are there any return effects that you see that, like with reading and this type of thing, if you, aren't, if something, if you don't get enough of a certain vitamin or whatever? Right. Um, I do, if I don't have the vitamin A, um, I do lose focus. And reading is still a challenge for me. I can, you know, if, if I have my kids on the floor and I'm reading a book to them, I can read that. That's fine. Read it, read it, read it. Fine. Um, if I have a textbook in front of me or, or a book that I'm reading, um, I really have to focus and, you know, I might read a sentence five, six, seven, eight, ten times just to, you know, get that into my brain because I can read it fine. It's just maintaining or, or, or taking in the information and keeping it. I lose it very quickly. Um, sometimes I'll read a page and I couldn't tell you one word that was on that page, so I have to go back to the top and read again. Um, so. You know, if I were to go back to biology, study biology, I don't think I could. Um, it would be very difficult to absorb all that information um, and maintain and retain that information. Um, so I, don't, I do not read for pleasure. 
um, just because it's <laughs> it takes so much time. Um, I might read articles. It's easier to read on the computer than it is in a book. Um, I'm not really sure why, but I do take that in a little bit easier. Um, so I, if I were to read an article, I'd, I'd rather have it on on the computer. Um, I don't read for pleasure at all. Just I don't remember it. So they had it wrong when you had two injections of vitamin A and you're completely <laughs> fine. So. Yeah, they did. I still have, um, I get tremors now, which I hadn't had before. I get very shaky. When I play hockey especially, it'll start about 10 minutes after I start playing and it'll last um, about a half hour, 20 minutes, half hour after I stop playing. It used to be about an hour and a half and it's shortened from treatments that I do. Um, but the tremors are pretty severe. They start in my left hand and go up my arm into my upper body, in my right arm, into my legs, it'll be in my tongue also. So if I'm skating, I get off onto the bench and I go for some water, I'm shooting it all over my face, you know, trying to get in my mouth. You know, if I, it gets too much, then I start falling down a little bit on the ice because my legs are so shaky. Um, it's still fun. <laughs> it's still fun to play. <laughs> um, so I get that. I can get that, you know, teaching sometimes. I get it shaky teaching. Um, my kids haven't noticed it, um, so I guess it's not too bad. Uh, I, I do get it playing softball as well, though. Um, I also have, I still get weakness, um, whereas, you know, I'll, I'll, I might be at the gym lifting weights and all of a sudden I can't even close my hands around the weights to lift them. So I got to sit there and wait, you know, a while. Or, or I'm at home and trying to open a bottle and I can't open it because I can't even hardly get my hands closed because there's no strength in them. Um, every once in a while, I'll, you know, on the weekend I might be awake the entire weekend from Friday night to sat Sunday evening, five, six hours. That's it that I'm awake. Um, I'm not really sure why that happens and it drives me nuts because I'd rather be outside, you know, doing something than asleep. So, Yes, yeah, one thing, our, a lot of the children with autism can't really explain how they feel so it's really interesting to hear you ex to be able to explain your vaccine reaction because most mm -hmm. of our kids had issues when they couldn't really talk very much yet anyway. Right. And also when you talk about how sometimes it'll come and go, like get, be worse sometimes, or mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know if it's with stress or with not enough of a vitamin or, or whatever, we don't, you know, you don't know everything about why things go away. But a lot of our kids, they'll have a good day and they'll have a bad day and we have no idea. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, to hear you talk about what you have going on, you know, really makes me think of these kids and how sometimes we may get upset. You were doing this yesterday. You could open that yesterday. You could do that yesterday. You know, there might be a good, solid medical reason why they just can't do it today. Right. And, and you know, certain, I'm still sensitive to light and sound, not nearly as, as bad. It's not nearly as bad as what it was. Um, but like uh, silverware clanging, you know, pots and pans clanging, if you're at, you know, in an audience and they're clapping, drives me nuts, so I kind of turn my head so at least the two people immediately on you know, my you know, immediate sides are not right in my ear. You know, I turn my head a little bit so it's not so bad. Um, like my brother is a trombone performance major, and so he's, you know, in <laughs> performances a lot, and you get, you know, a lot of people clapping. It drives me nuts, but it's just as it is. You know, certain keys on the piano bother me more than others. Why? I don't know, you know. It rattles in your head sometimes, so. I'm not sure why, it just does. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to make sure you, you got on this interview for people to know about? Would I do it over again? Yeah, I would. Um, I've learned a lot and um, I've met a lot of interesting people, um, learned a lot of interesting things and um, I think it can in some way help you know, others um, to hear possibly what I've gone through. Um, and hopefully to prevent it, you know, I have a niece and nephew, and um, if that prevents them from getting sick, then there you go, it's worth it. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of things that I've, I'm grateful for now, so. That's, well, it's such a marvelous attitude. A lot of times, uh, we t I always say, I, I am such a different person because of my kids. They teach me so much, and it, I can't imagine life a different way. Right. And uh, not that I would ever wish for my children to go through that again, but I am grateful for where we are at also. So I really appreciate your outlook and your and your input to and your willingness to yeah. to let us know what has been going on with you. Thank you so much. Sure.